Right. Well, Stephen, I have too many questions, so I wrote nothing. So that's uh, <laughs> probably, uh, you know, I'm in creative bliss here. This movie is a sweet movie. Do you mind it being described as sweet? No, I like that a lot. It is. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a flattering way to describe it. Um, you know, it's a movie about romance, and it's a movie about, uh, you know, people who truly are in love. And uh, it's also a story about uh, saying the things that m need to be said while you have a chance to say them before it's too late. It's about getting it out. It's about just expressing yourself. Is the fact that you're here talking about this mean that you really have a special place for this movie? Yeah, I mean, I don't usually, you know, mm -hmm. you know, go around the country and do this, but I, I just, uh, I've had a special place in my heart for the story for many years. Uh, certainly, when I was a child, and saw it on in black and white. It was based on a very old Irene Dunn Spencer Tracy movie called A Guy Named Joe, mm -hmm. made in 1943, and I used to see it on the Late Late Show, and it just hit a chord in me. The whole idea that. You know, you know, two people in love, one person dies, but he comes back, can't be seen or heard by anybody living, but can somehow still make you do things, can somehow still influence you. Who's to say the next idea in your mind is your own? That's, yeah. that's the point. It's also real different for you in that the soundtrack doesn't really play much of a part. It's very understated in this film, and I've always gone to your movies and stood up and saluted for John Williams as much as anything else. <laughs> And uh, it, it's, it's a very different style even of making a film for you. Not yeah. a lot of great different kinds of camera angles and things. Yeah. A lot of stuff that you do, but very understated. I think John Williams would be very flattered by what you just said. Because, you know, you know, John and I have a bit of an operatic relationship that our scores are rather operatic. And we haven't had a chance to be, to be understating and subtle. And with this story, the last thing that John and I wanted was a, so to speak, Spielberg John Williams score. You know, we, we weren't looking for a memorable soundtrack to sell in, sco in stores. Mm -hmm. we, we were just looking to kind of gently give a, a kind of uh, carpet of stars musically for the performers to pretty much act on. Just feel, feeling music, music that's almost uh, uh, cerebral, that will sort of somehow get into your feelings but will bypass your ears. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much the point. In all your movies, is there a single thread that runs through any of them necessarily? I know, I know you love airplanes. <laughs> you can't yeah. get, you don't go too far away from no. bombers, no. even from you know. I mean, there are yeah. a lot of bombers in your yeah. movies, but is there a single thread that runs through any of them of kind of a story? Well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I, I honestly can say that I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about you know common denominators in my in my films because I'm so busy usually making the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, but just sort of extemporaneously speaking, I think the one thing that does run through my films is is sort of a, a sense of innocence. And, just a sense of wonder. Uh, uh, I've always wondered and about things bigger than me, and, and I, I like being reduced to a ant-sized proportions in relation to the cosmos or just to the universe. I like feeling that there's a lot out there and we don't know everything. Don't you like to give hope? I do very much. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a cynical person. I mean, I don't. I, I think you are what you do, what you write, what you, what movies you make, and, and I, I, I don't like cynicism. I can be very cynical like anybody else, but I don't like to mm -hmm. let that get into my movies. With all the success that you've had, you know, and I'm sure that even at times you, when you look back on your childhood saying, God, I can't believe I've done all these things, but have you gotten to a point where if you're doing something, can someone say, Stephen, that stinks? I mean, are you, you know, it's, it's very hard to get surrounded by a lot of people that say, my God, I can't tell him what to do, you know, because they're into this Stephen Spielberg Stuff. I mean, someone. It, do you got somebody who can tell you that Stephen, this doesn't work, or this oh, isn't well, right? Oh well, certainly my, the head of my company, Kathleen Kennedy, who started out as my secretary and worked her way up to my associate producer, then my co-producer, then, then the producer of ET, and then mm -hmm. she's run my company for the last five years. I mean, I pretty much listen to her now. I like to think she's my boss. And and uh, when I first started out, everybody gave me advice, mm -hmm. and I loved it. My first film, Sugarland, and then Duel before that, everybody was, was so eager to help and contribute their ideas. And I, I receive them very well. I love collaboration. Mm -hmm. But then once the first two films became successful, like Jaws and Close Encounters, the same people that were helping me voluntarily dropped out of my life. And I guess felt that I knew it all or something like that. And I felt kind of abandoned, if you will. And I had to then work very hard to hire people who would help me make my movies, not just for their artistry, but for their candor that I don't look to just hire people just to do a job and keep their mouths shut. I want to know what they think and how they feel about it. And we make movies in a very collaborative, when you talk to Richard and Holly, if you ask them the same question. Well, they tell me, yeah. You know, it's a real collaboration. I'm not a totalitarian uh, auteur filmmaker. 
You ever, what are your comments in general as we go away on critics? Do you pay attention to what they're saying or you just take it with a grain of salt or uh, think sometimes they just don't understand? I don't, I mean, I never poo poo, you know, reviews or anything like that. I just don't read them. And I, the reason I don't read them is because the movie's already out. I can't do anything about it. If somebody has a marvelous insight, the film's playing on 1,500 screens. What am I going to do about it? <laughs> so I feel that, uh, you know, bad reviews are only going to depress me and I'm not going to learn anything from them. Good reviews will make me happy. But I kind of, there's a moral equivalent of reading a bad review or reading a good review, you must read a bad review. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of just stay away. And usually about a year later, I'll read a couple things. I really will. I mean, a, couple, a year later after a movie, I'll, I'll read some of the reviews. Before I go, do you like my favorite movie of Steven Spielberg era, 1941? I love that you like this movie. I mean, I, I wish I had a 1941 button. I would give it to you well, right now. Well, I wish now. you did because I, were, I love that movie. I just <laughs> like it. It was a much maligned film. Oh, thank thank you. you. That's I'm just, I love that movie. No, that's great. I love yeah. that movie. No